So, I uh, thought I'd do a quick video on the use of Marine VHF and specifically uh, the functions that um, people forget that are there. Uh, so, most Marine radios these days have um, DSC functionality, Digital Selective Calling. Um, most people will recognise this as the distress button under the flap on the radio. Uh, but there's some other features you can do with that. Uh, to avoid cluttering up channel 16 with calling, um, finding out where your buddy is via a position request, uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm sat uh, in, in my rib on the driveway here and just like to go through some of those functions and, uh, and the equipment I'm going to use to demonstrate that. So this is the, okay, so this is the dashboard of my rib. I'll zoom out a little bit there. You can see that. So the equipment we're going to be using, um, I've got a Raymarine um, Ray 63 uh, VHF and I've also got a uh, Axiom plotter um, that will come into it, believe it or not. And I've also got a um, handheld uh, ICOM. Uh, this is the uh, M94D, uh, which is a uh, DSC handheld radio. Okay. So, as previously mentioned, um, a DSC radio, identifiable. It's got the, uh, the distress button protected by a, a flap so you can't press it by accident. Um, so that's really useful. And the important thing with these DSC radios is that they are um, hooked up uh, to a GPS. Uh, a lot of them have got GPS built in these days or can be connected to uh, an external device um, like your plotter or a standalone GPS receiver via the common networks, either NME A2000 um, or the older style uh, NME A0183, um, which I can do some videos on, on those connections if people are interested, um, comment below. Uh, so, first of all, yes, what do you need for DSC to work? Uh, as mentioned, you need a valid GPS signal to the radio. Uh, so we can see that here. I've got a uh, latitude and longitude uh, on the radio there. And there's a, um, up in the top corner, we can see there's a GPS signal um, icon showing that that's correct as well. And same on the handheld that I've got here as well. Uh, down at the bottom there, oh, focus, there we go. Uh, we can see the, the position mentioned there. Okay, the other thing we need for this to work is when you um, apply, and everybody should have a Ofcom license registered for their vessel or portable radio, and with that license um, you get given two things, which you can see written above my VHF there. Uh, okay, so we have the MMSI number, which is a unique nine-digit number for your vessel, and the ship's call sign as well. And these should be uh, shown. Um, they're required to identify yourself um, when doing a traditional voice mayday, um, etc. So uh, definitely have those shown on your vessel. Um, in the case of a handheld, um, if it is going to be used on multiple vessels, then you can register that as a portable number. Uh, you'll get again a unique MMSI number. Uh, so you see on my handheld here, it has, oh, when it focuses, uh, there we go, at the top, um, as a different MMSI number to the one that was shown uh, for the other radio. So that ends in 943, and this one obviously ending in 153. Um, transportable licenses, I believe, are only valid in the UK. Um, in other countries, you can only get a ship's license. So it's slightly different. So this is all valid for the UK anyway. So between the two radios, we'll do some, some tests. So first off, the normal distress signal. Um, I'm not gonna uh, press the button and go through that because uh, this is linked up to live antennas. Um, I'm also on land, um, so uh, we don't, we don't wanna do that. But um, if you follow your radio's instructions, it is a case of lifting the flap and you hold the button down for three or five seconds. Um, the display will actually do a countdown and it will beep very loudly whilst it's um, doing it. And that will automatically um, submit a distress signal um, that carries your um, current position uh, with your MMSI number. Um, 
and the fact that it's a distress, which obviously will be picked up by Coast Guard and, uh, and can be dealt with. Um, you should always follow up with the standard voice mayday as well. That's the bit that most people know about. So what I want to cover is the other DSC functionality that you can do with your radio. So the first one you can do is, um, let's say you want to get hold of your buddy, okay? So normal procedure would be channel 16 as the distress slash cooling frequency or channel. And uh, you would, you know, go on to 16, call up your buddy, arrange to move to one of the other ship to ship channels, 72, 77, uh, channel 8, etc. Uh, and uh, you'd have that conversation on 16, move away to the uh, other channel and uh, and off you go. Uh, obviously those few moments you are using channel 16 uh, and in busy areas um, there could be an emergency already in progress or whatever. So we can completely avoid cluttering up channel 16 with DSC. Uh, obviously you need to know the MMSI number of the vessel you're trying to get hold of and that could be done in a number of ways. Uh, one, you might have already had that conversation uh, with your buddy or number two, you might be able to find that on AIS. So AIS being the automatic identification system that's on a lot of vessels now. Um, and uh, yeah, you can look up a, a vessel on that. I'm not sure if I will have picked up any on my plotter here. Let's see what we've got. Uh, oh, there we go. So uh, I have got a target out here. So I can press on that. And this shows me, that's Arcadia. And we can see, oh, just disappeared there. I'll just press on it again. And you can see the MMSI number. So if, uh, if your buddy is uh, transmitting AIS, um, absolutely you can get that from your plotter as well. So I've got a couple of things programmed into the radio and they all have an address book. So just to show you that first. So if I press onto my menu button here, uh, so you need to read the manual to see how your individual radio works, but you'll have a DSC menu somewhere. And we can go into that. And we can see the different things uh, that we're going to, and I'm going to go through and talk about the different ones that are there. Uh, but first of all, just to show you, we actually do have a phone book and I've programmed in uh, a few of my buddies, uh, MMSI numbers, and you can give them all names and uh, uh, so you know who they are, etc. Okay, so I'm going to be using Dorian HH. Dorian's my name and HH for handheld. So that's the one that I'm going to be uh, using for testing today. So the first one we're going to cover is what's called the individual uh, individual call, okay? So this is a routine call, and this is the one you would use to contact your, uh, your buddy and uh, arrange a channel and do this all without talking. So we can go to individual call, okay? And then uh, you can either choose to um, enter an MMSI manually, choose from the phone book or from a recent list. I'm going to hit phone book and I'm going to scroll to the handheld and press OK. Okay, then you'll be asked to select a channel. So uh, here we go, here's the arranged channel bit and um, as it's there at the top, let's choose channel 72. But they're all, all the ship to ship ones uh, are all listed. Okay, and uh, I don't know why this focus is moving around. But, uh, but there we go, right, so back up to 72 anyway. Okay. Now, uh, the last bit then is I'm going to press the OK button. And then we will hear some beeping from the handheld, hopefully. So uh, let's see if I can uh, record these both together. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we'll be able to balance this up here. Oh yeah, it's sitting there nicely. So we can see both happening together, hopefully ready to catch it in case it drops. So you can see this, this radio is just uh, on standby, channel 16 calling. It could be on any channel, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm just going to press the OK button. OK, and it says calling. OK. So, OK, so we get that, so just press OK. Now, um, my radios are set up to auto-acknowledge. Um, that is a setting uh, in the menu. Um, it could be manual or auto, but as you can see, my handheld automatically uh, received the transmission um, with the request to change to channel 72. Um, there was a, an alarm that went off as well, 
and it tra automatically transmitted, as it says here, transmitted acknowledgement. Okay, so that transmitted the acknowledgement back and uh, both radios are now on channel 72, ready to just talk. So no calling on channel 16. Okay, just to um, just go back, uh, let's put it on some random channel, doesn't really matter. Um, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to change the menu settings here so you can see the process if I go into manual, uh, which is how a lot of uh, um, radios will be set up. So I'm going to go into DSC here, auto acknowledge, the individual, I'm going to set to manual so you'll see what happens. Okay, so let's just choose a random channel here. There we go. Uh, right, so back again, so we do DSC here, DSC calls, individual call, phone book, handheld, we'll choose channel 72, okay, and press OK, and that says calling. This now has an alarm saying it's received, okay, so I just press the button. So this is on manual now, so it'll keep beeping, saying that there's a request from Tafiti, that's the name of my rib, it's in the phone book here. Uh, so I'm going to say alarm off, and now I can either ignore or I can reply with able. Okay, so if I reply with able just by pressing this soft button, okay, that's transmitting the acknowledgement. And this one is saying that it's been accepted and press OK to go to channel 72. So press OK, we're now on both, both on channel 72. Okay, so that's the use of DSC uh, as an individual call. It is possible if you run, um, I don't know, a training centre or um, a sailing club, uh, whatever, where you've got a number of safety boats out in the water, you can actually register for a group MMSI number. Um, so you then register all of your individual ship's MMSI numbers uh, with the group, and you can do, instead of an individual call, you can actually do a group call, uh, which will go out to all the uh, all the registered MMSI numbers part of that group and it does exactly the same thing so uh, the individuals acknowledge um, and those that have acknowledged will go to the channel selected those that haven't obviously uh, won't receive and, and and they'll be that but um, I don't have a group that I could show you uh, so um, uh, but the, the process is exactly the same instead of choosing an individual call Okay, there is a group call, but it works exactly the same. You're just going to use a group MMSI numbers, which are structured slightly differently. They start with a zero, if I'm uh, if I'm correct. Uh, I might have that wrong. Um, that might be base stations. Can't remember anyway. So that's the individual call. Uh, nice and useful. Um, of course, it does set an alarm off uh, with your buddy. So rather than over the engine noise, not hearing you call their boat's name, etc., their radio is going to be beeping away and saying, you know, somebody's trying to call you. Uh, so that's a useful one. The other one that I want to cover is the whole conversation over, where are you? Oh, I'm over near that blue boat. Can you see me? No, I can't. Okay, so what we've got, modern technology. As I said, nine times out of ten, your radio is going to be connected to your plotter for the GPS position. The other side of that is is the other uh, communication is that your buddy's position can be plotted on your plotter by doing a position request. Okay, so it's a very very similar process. So uh, from the beginning, I'm going to press into my menu. I'm going to go into my DSC calls, and I'm going to choose position request. Okay, I'm going to press OK on that. And actually, just before I do that, I'm just going to set... Uh, this is set to automatic. I'm going to set it to manual. Um, so auto-acknowledge, position. I'm going to set that to manual so that, uh, so that we can see the process of what goes on here. Okay. So again, uh, it doesn't matter what channel we're on. Okay, so, um, yeah, speaking of channels, so DSC operates on its own individual channel. Um, so the... Uh, marine radios have essentially two receivers built into them. Uh, one that you control the channel you're listening to, and the other one is permanently listening to what used to be called channel 70. If you've got a really old radio, you'll still have channel 70 on it, uh, but it should not be used. Um, any new radios now won't have channel 70. It is used purely for the DSC signals. 
So back to the position request. So we've chosen position request from the menu. I'm going to choose my phone book again. Um, so you need to know the MMSI number of who you're requesting position. Okay, and there's the handheld. So I'm going to press OK on that. Okay, and that's sending the position request. We can hear over here the radio is flashing. Okay, so it says received a position request. So let's say alarm off. And I now get my options. Would I like to uh, accept that? Um, different radios, but the accept or able will essentially send the, 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 the response back. So either is fine on this radio. So I can say able. That's transmitting the reply. And two things have happened now. First of all, the radio is alarming. I'm going to OK that to make that one quiet. But not only is the radio alarming to say it's received a position DSC, OK, my plotter is also alarming, saying there's been a DSC position response. And I can do a number of things. I can close the message, and it will just be in a log. I can hit just a straight go to, or I can place a waypoint. So if I hit place waypoint, OK, uh, that's now stored a waypoint um, for my buddy um, in the GPS. Now, obviously, it's going to be in exactly the same place as where I'm sat here. Um, there we go. If we zoom in far enough, <laughs> um, so the black dot is where, where I am, and the um, green uh, hexagon is, is the waypoint mark that it's assigned here. And if I actually press on that, you can see that's a DSC position request. So you can store it as a waypoint, then you can navigate to it or, uh, or, or do what you like. Or I could have just pressed go to at the time and it would have put my plotter straight into uh, navigation mode to that point. So as you can see, it saves that whole conversation of where are you? You get a, a lat long broadcast straight away, straight into your plotter. And uh, and that's that, um, you know, the uh, you can just go straight to where they are. Hopefully that was useful. Um, that's just some basics, which um, I don't think people use really enough. Um, but yeah, just in summary, what you need for this to work, your VHF must have an MMSI number programmed in. It must have GPS connected to it so that it works. And uh, ideally uh, connected to your plotter for the, um, for the position requests to work. Um, so it is pretty standard. Most plotters should work. Um, it will definitely work if you've got um, same manufacturer stuff. Um, sometimes cross manufacturer, the position requests don't work. But what, de what definitely does work, um, because it is built into the DSC standard on uh, NME A2000 and 0183, is the distress signal. So if somebody does send off a... Um, a distress alert through DSC uh, that will come up on the plotters of uh, everybody that's got their kit connected up um, it will come up as an alarm on your plotter and you'll be able to see then instantly are you close enough to be able to offer assistance um, should you be required so very useful hope you, you uh, found this video of some use um, if you'd like to know more on marine electronics um, maybe about wiring some of these devices together. Uh, please let us know in the comments below and I'll see what I can arrange. Thank you very much.